Hi, everybody, and welcome to Exegetically Speaking, a podcast to the friends and faculty of Wheaton College, Wheaton, Illinois, and the Lanier Theological Library in Houston, Texas. My name is David Capes, and I'm the Senior Research Fellow at the Lanier Library and former dean up in the School of Biblical Theological Studies at Wheaton College. Our purpose in these podcasts is pretty simple. We want to promote the study of biblical languages, Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic, so that we can read the Bible more faithfully, study it more fully, and not just read it and study it, but also to live it. Joining me today is Dr. Richard Schultz, the Blanchard Professor of Old Testament at Wheaton College. Dr. Schultz, good to see you, and uh, welcome to Exegetically Speaking. Thank you. It's good to be here. Now, we, we, we didn't do this last year, but I'm glad we're getting a chance to do this this year. But So my first question is always is, how did you get started doing biblical languages? Well, I actually began studying Hebrew in Gießen, Germany, in German, but I transferred then to Trinity Evangelical Divinity School, and in my first year there, I had a course on Hebrew exegesis of the prophets hmm. uh, after I finished the beginning course, and that was with Thomas McComiskey, and we were looking at Isaiah, and I, I just got such such a wonderful introduction to the benefits of Hebrew, nice. uh, especially to understand the prophets that it ended up on the Old Testament side of the ledger from that point on. Well, did you ever take any Greek along the way? Sure. I took Greek and I had a great course in Septuagint as well, and advanced grammar and advanced exegesis. But my love for the Old Testament remained from the beginning. So you teach in the PhD program, but you also teach in languages as well. Yes, I, I teach... Uh, uh, book studies from the Hebrew text, but I also mentor doctoral students. And so, you know, right now I'm mentoring a doctoral student who's finished a dissertation on the allusions to the Abraham narrative in the book of Isaiah. Mm. And so I've been reading a lot about Isaiah, but I'm also teaching a course in Isaiah right now. Yeah. Well, is, is there a, a particular part of the Old Testament, I know you mentioned the prophets, that you really sort of gravitate to, that you feel like, okay, that's just where my heartbeat well, the, is? Well, the, Two parts that I most focus on is Isaiah, hmm. where I wrote my dissertation, and wisdom literature, especially Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. And I'm right now teaching a doctoral seminar on wisdom theology. Hmm. Now, today we're going to look at Genesis chapter 12, verses 1, 2, and 3. Speaking of Abraham, yep. Abraham might figure, or Abram at least, might figure important yep. here. Yep. So, so tell us about this passage. What do we need to know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Genesis 12 is in a sense, the the official launch of the Abraham narrative. And it's often called the the call of Abraham, Mm -hmm. where he is uh, called by God to leave really the the cradle of civilization in Ur to go to the back country of Canaan. And chapter 15 and 17 will set forth what we refer to as the Abrahamic or the ancestral covenant. Mm -hmm. But uh, it all begins with the call to go, to leave and, and follow to where God puts him. Hmm. So what's interesting about this text is it uses the word blessing in some form five different times. Yeah. Up to this point, the word blessing has been used five times in, in the first 11 chapters. And now all of a sudden, blessing is beginning. So in a sense, this is the launch of salvation history of which we are the benefit, beneficiaries. So this is an idea of blessing, like you said, only a few times, but then after yeah. that, it's pretty yeah. frequent. Now, is this about blessing God, or is this about blessing no b- being uh, blessed I, themselves, the people being blessed? Right. This is God giving blessing, that God is enhancing the lives of these people, and the specific blessings to Abraham that will be set forth in this and the following chapters are the blessings of, of land, territory that he can settle on, because right now he's a, a nomad. He has just come in as an immigrant. The blessings of offspring, which then will be described as numerous as the stars of the heaven or the dust of the earth or the sand on the seashore. And also what I would say is the primary blessing that is a personal relationship with the creator God. That is, he will be, his descendants will be God's people and they will be, that's God will be the God of Abraham. Abraham, and even described as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right. Now, that very last one in, in, in verse 3 it is often sort of picked up in the New Testament in Galatians. Sure. That right. I will bless those who bless you, and in you all the families 
of the earth yep. shall be blessed. That word families, does that mean like what we mean by families or is that something Well, else? actually, it, it's an intermediate group between uh, the tribe and the father's house that usually would be multi-generational. And so it'd be more like the idea of a clan. Mm. So it'd be those who are probably biologically related, but it's between the tribal group and the kind of the extended household. Right. And so this notion of this universal blessing that in you, Abraham, or Abram yeah. again, yeah. Uh, all the families, all the clans, to use that term, of yeah. the earth shall be blessed. It, 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 is, is that, that you, you said that's the kind of the beginning of the uh, kind of salvation history, right? Right. And, and Christians view and understand that J- Jesus has sort of fulfilled that passage Mm -hmm. that, yeah, they had had land in the past. Yes, they had become a great nation. Yes, God had protected them in in many ways and such. But they they don't become a, quote, universal blessing until we come and we see that in the New Testament. And that's through and by Jesus of Nazareth. Right. And and some recent biblical theologians have uh, argued that uh, in chapter 15... Uh, where the covenant is first set forth, uh, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteous. That mm. those blessings are primarily his offspring and land as a blessing. But when you get to chapter 17, where the circumcision is added as a sign of the covenant, mm-hmm. now the focus is really on one seed. That is the line uh, that will ultimately lead to Jesus Christ. So it's uh, an, a singular seed as opposed to numerous descendants. And are those um, things that you see in the Hebrew text, or is that just something you see when you come to the New Testament? Well, there is a fairly detailed argument in terms of whether seed is a collective singular or an individual sa- singular. And Paul will argue yeah, in Galatians it's not seeds, but it's seed uh, when he applies, sees Jesus as fulfilling this. Mm. And so the claim is made that what Paul is doing in, in distinguish between a collective seed and an individual seed is actually reflecting the distinction between Genesis 15 and 17, where the word seed could refer to uh, a collective offspring or progeny as opposed to a singular seed, Hmm. which is the ultimate goal. And uh, again, I have a student working now on uh, the book of Isaiah who's arguing then when you're talking about seed, throughout the book of Isaiah, you really are focusing on that individual line, the royal David heir, mm-hmm. uh, the Messiah, as opposed to just offspring in general. Offspring of, of Abraham that, that, yeah. <laughs> at yeah. that point. You know, in the South, we often use the term, well, bless your heart, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've, we, we've talked about that before. Is there a, what's a good synonym for that word, blessing? I mean, um, is there one that comes to mind? To, to endow with life-enhancing benefits. Okay. To endow. Um, to, to, okay. I mean, basically, God is enhancing their lives, whether it's in material or spiritual ways. Okay. Right? And, and when an individual then blesses God, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, you are, in a sense, attributing to him the status of being the source of all those blessings. So mm-hmm. we're not, in a sense, enhancing God. We're not giving him anything. We're giving him praise. But we are, uh, we are acknowledging that all that we have comes from him mm-hmm. uh, when we're blessing God. Every good when gift he's blessing and every us, perfect gift. Yeah. When he's blessing us, that's something different. And, of course, there, there are two different words in Hebrew that are translated as bless. And one of them is here, Barak. We know it from personal names, right? Barak. Right. Yeah. Um, but Ashrei is the other one. And that's used in Psalm 1. Mm. Uh, Blessed is the man. And that actually is better understood as who is fortunate, mm. uh, who has reason to rejoice, who is enviable. It's, it's a whole different word in Hebrew, but in English we use bless for both of them, which can be confusing. Yeah, I think that's part of the thing is that in the biblical languages, sometimes there's right. precision that you don't see in all of our translations. Doctor, Dr. Schultz, thank you for being a part of this today. Thanks to Silvio Vasquez, Rebecca Larson, and Krista Sanchez for helping us edit and produce the podcast. Thanks to Phil Keggy for our music. 
you want to study biblical languages, then the best place to do that is Wheaton College. They have a wonderful program, better than any school I've ever seen, whether you want to be a graduate or undergraduate student. So go to the website, www.wheaton.edu. Look for modern and classical languages and get started today. If you have questions or comments about this podcast or any of our guests, we'd love to hear from you. Contact us at exegetically.speaking at wheaton.edu. Thanks for listening.